Well, let's break it down even further. Sometimes, and not just sometimes, but a lot of the time, you don't have to play a whole lot of strings. Let's just go to a bubble part. Now, bubble parts are palm muted notes coming out of the chords for the most part, out of pentatonic scales. I'm going to play along with the track, and I'm just going to put in a very sparse rhythm guitar part and lean in the sense that from a density standpoint, I have less voices. When I was playing this, my maximum number of voices was four, four strings. Each string is a voice. Now I'm going to break it down and just use the root and maybe the flat seven. Those are the E's and D notes. So I'll play them in two different octaves. Four. Now I'm not going to go up here because it'll stick out. I'm going to show you the right and the wrong here. Let's start off on the fifth string. Now the problem is down low, I'm not that far away from the bass. And the bass is moving around a little bit, so it's going to clean out when I go. See how you can hear the bass more clearly. So the register that you play in is very important. Now, that sounds silly. It just doesn't work. It's not effective. So we've already decided that bubble parts work really well on the third and fourth strings because that's the register that you use them. It just happens to fall really well on those particular strings. So that's your starting point. Bubble parts fit in the mix. You need to start like a drummer, get a groove going. Don't forget to think like a conga player, a percussionist. And then go over to the third string, deaden it, and then pick the root of the chord, because it was an E7, so we started with E. And since it's a dominant seventh chord, the formula for a seventh chord is one, three, five, flat seven. You color the line with the flat seven and a one. And you're laying them both out on the same string, because you wouldn't go. You don't get the same timbre, the same kind of little funky sound. Another thing is just the feel. Now, I'm going to talk about technique for a minute here. When you flat pick, there are three general positions. You can pick parallel to the string, and I call it picking flat. It's a very strident, sharp sound. It's not the sound you're looking for here. If you angle the pick, if you turn it so that you're playing on the next side of the pick, it's the darkest, and it works really nice. So you have a slight bend. You come in with your palm mute. The other approach, which is really effective in your funk, is to play on the bridge side of the pick, meaning on the downstroke. The pick's inclined this way. It's real soft. So we're going to talk about this later on when we get into the full chords. So there we have bubble parts. Now we're going to build off that bubble part because you might get bored just playing that. You might want some other notes to play. Let's go back to our theory. We know that the chord is 1, 3, 5, flat 7. That's just a dominant 7th chord. Lay out the arpeggio so it's E, G sharp, B, D. And then you'd have it in other registers, but here. That's the arpeggio. You see it right on top of these E7 chords. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to punctuate that same bubble part along with some of the other tones out of the arpeggio. All right, let's stop and listen to what I did. You get a little question and answer idea going. So that's my question, the first phrase. I came down to the B, the fifth of the chord. Then I go. I don't know if that's exactly what I played, but you see how I'm going to incorporate the other tones. So that's one approach, and you're just actually learning your theory because guess what? Remember I said that rhythm guitar playing is going to help your lead playing. Now most guys would say, all right, I'm going to solo this with E minor pentatonic. There's nothing wrong with that, but you've got to know your arpeggios to get the other sounds that are available. And right away you're learning your arpeggios, but you're thinking of them from a rhythm guitar standpoint. Let's build some clusters out of these. Any combination of the notes of the arpeggio would work for little double stop licks. So I'm going to start with just roots and thirds. Let's go ahead and roll the track, and then I'll holler out what I'm doing as I go. So I'm playing E's and G sharps, 1's and 3's. Problem is, you know, it doesn't give the color we're looking for. So we need the other tones that really bring the color out. The 3rd and the flat 7, those are the guide tones of this chord family. Now what I did when I went across like that, I'm playing the guide tones, the E's, excuse me, the D's and the G sharps, 
and they just invert across. Let's stop the track and I'll talk about these because they're so important when you're playing over dominant family chords and especially in funk or blues. Inside every dominant seventh chord that you play, you will find a third and a flat seven. The interval between these notes is six half steps. That's the same as three whole steps, so it's called a tritone. It divides the octave equally in half because you've got 12 half steps in the octave. So these notes would invert all the way across the neck. Notice what happens when you go to your second and your third strings. The shape changes. But if you see these, and then you simply approach from a half step below, you've got one of the very important staples of funk guitar. Also your horn parts. So there's another, that's a big part of what you want to see when you're playing in a dominant seventh situation, especially in funk. Okay, then we also had any other combination. There I have the fifth and the flat seven. You can see it in the arpeggio. Here I have the fifth and the root. Here I have the third and the root. So all these different combinations. I'm building little clusters, chords. That's my arpeggio. And I'll break it down for you. Okay, so in. Do you see how far? We haven't even gotten close to going a big block chord. Because when you have that many voices, the problem is you can really muddy up the mix and you're not leaving any space for anybody else. And that's critical in funk. 